We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we're doing Can Women Handle the Truth? And in the G spot, that is guest spotlight, I have to join me the very hilarious comedian, Ron G. All right. He is also the host of Two Piece Podcast. This is a self growth and healing podcast for the fellas. So if you need it, make sure that you check it out. And also joining me is the lovely, the beautiful, the brilliant mind, Bree Jenkins. She is a marriage and family therapist and dating coach. You guys have seen both of these guests on the podcast before, but now we have them live in full effect and in action because quarantine is over. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. <laughs> What's up, Ms. Jenkins? Hey, Ms. Jenkins. Hey. <laughs> Love that you guys were able to make it today. Oh, my God. Um, But inspired this episode was a post that you had done and we're going to get into it in just a second, right? Uh, we're going to get into can women handle the truth, but you guys have to start with my spice breaker, which is when was the defining moment that you first fell in love with yourself? Tell us that story because even if you've been here before, it may have happened. You may have had to reinvent yourself. There could be something new that just happens. Tell me that moment where you were like, I'm that chick or I'm that dude. Thank you, Jesus. I love myself. Go ahead, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we toss it to you. I feel like the biggest transformations always come after major calamity mm. because there's just something about when you have hardship, your ego gets broken yeah. down in a way that you're just open to just learn more, to receive, to really lean into growing in, into yourself. So I think it was after I had a major breakup, like a long on and off again, six year relationship Ooh. where you're like, I overgave and I played myself <laughs> and I didn't listen overgave. to the signs and did all the things that like, no, now I tell people like, don't do that. Um, and I really leaned in, you know, I went to therapy. I read the self-help books. Mm. I was just about really becoming the best version of me, yeah. changing my mindset, being positive, really deeply believing in love and everything just started happening, yep. started clicking. I found my passion. Yep. And that's when I was like, oh, OK, I'm that girl. You know? And like yeah. everything just ensues from there. So that was my moment after, after a breakup. A mm -hmm. breakup. Yeah. That's what it was for me, too, girl. Praise the Lord for breakups. Yeah, breakups get you yes. where you need to be. <laughs> yes, Break absolutely. Break you where you need to be and start, start a podcast, have a life together, <laughs> became a life coach. Like, oh, yeah. Yes. God, be doing his thing. OK, yeah. Roger, you got to let us know what was your defining moment? When did you first fall in love with yourself? So I think so I feel like. Most women get their heart breaks, they get their heart broken because they date a man who don't have a plan. Correct. When he don't have a plan for himself, he don't have a plan for you. But we run a red light because we think he got a magical love that can fix that. For men, and for me, every time I got my heart broke was because I wasn't clear about my plan. Mm -hmm. Like I knew what my purpose was, but I wasn't clear about my plan. And yeah. I feel like as a man, when you're clear about your plan, can't nobody shake you or rock you. And so like I'm a clean, hilarious comedian and I'm, I'm emotional. Well, I'm in touch with my emotions, but I dated women who have no sense of humor, uh, unaffectionate, didn't know how to compliment, and don't like to cuddle. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And I'm like, <laughs> they don't have a sense of humor, and that's my fault because I know what my vision is. And I feel like for men, when you don't know what you're, you're not clear about your plan, you date for where you're at, but not where you're going. Mm -hmm. So when you marry early and you don't, and you get to where you got to go, that person can't go with you. Yep. Because mm -hmm. cracking the plane on the ground is not a problem. But when you finally yes. get to where you got to go, it, it it's not sustainable yep. and you outgrow her and then now you you ain't got no good reason to tell her you just like something just don't feel right <laughs> right so you gotta be clear about your plan <laughs> before you get married and that's when i feel like too women y'all love a man with a plan oh my god oh. that is the most sexiest yeah, just thing a plan. ever and you ain't got to be in your plan fellas you just got to know what your plan is Dr. King dream came alive after he died. Articulate it to like, let us know where you're directing and leading us and we will follow. But if you don't have the plan, but, and then I need it also supported with some evidence, right? Like I need to see you starting to take action. Tangible, measurable evidence. To yes. that. Because fellas, when you don't have a plan, a woman will have a plan for you. Uh -huh. FYI. We will, we will make a plan. <laughs> Y'all will have a plan let for us. Let me tell you what's going to happen in the next 10 years for us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I love this. You guys, we're going to get right into um, the meat of this. Uh, you had posted something, Ron, of um, it, it was like one of your you have like a million funny videos, but it was one of the videos about how uh, something about how we, 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 women. You teach we, a man how to lie to you. Yes, that's what it was. You teach was a like, man how to lie to you. So <sighs> it got me thinking, can women handle the truth? Right. Because I think, uh, Brian, you you and I can probably even speak to this yeah. in our coaching. Um, 
is that sometimes we have to deliver information in a way that's digestible to the client. Yes. And we may notice that women may have a tendency to take it more maybe personal or react more emotionally. And it's not that the men don't feel the feelings or experience mm -hmm. them, but as women, we sometimes succumb to them, right? Yes. So uh, I think that you can relate in that area. And I just felt like we needed to have an episode on uh, honesty and truth and even who lies more, men or women. Yeah. I feel like men have a lot more um, practice with emotional suppression. Mm. It's not that they don't feel the mm -hmm. feelings. It's just that manhood conditions them to be able to not have those emotions driving the car. Yep. Whereas women, a lot of times will, that thing will be moving. We'll be going 80 miles an hour <laughs> driving off the cliff. Yeah. And we're like, ah! yeah. And so <laughs> you can absolutely teach a person. You can teach a person that you can't handle the truth. You can't handle the response. So people are going to try to adapt yep. and keep the peace. And so, so you think it has happens. partners uh, avoiding honesty? Absolutely. If somebody is honest with you and you have a off the chart reaction, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's conditioning. Psychologically, <laughs> nobody wants to endure that again. For yeah. sure. So it's like, you know, if I tell you something and you have this major reaction and you're crying and it takes us months to repair our relationship or you, or you hold a grudge. Yep. For weeks and weeks and weeks. It makes me rethink. How am I incentivized mm -hmm. to be honest with you? Yeah. For sure. Usually for men, I feel like it's a landmine. Truth is a landmine for us. And we're taught from a young age, especially when you got a strong mom, mm. that truth will get you in trouble. Mm. So when you meet a partner, it's the same thing. And I also feel like, again, like you mentioned, there's no incentive for being honest. And mm. um, I feel like women, you are, you're, you're great at cultivating the environment for what truth feels like in your house. Meaning Agreed. like, man, Agreed. we're responsible for setting the tone. Mm -hmm. Like if I tell you not to yell at me, I'm not going to yell at you to show you that this is what I need in okay. order to feel safe. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be responsible for that. But also I have a joke about uh, ladies, you teach a man how to lie to you. Meaning like when a man is actually ready to settle down, you literally become his best friend. So when, <laughs> so when a grown man is settled down and he's ready and you become you his best friend, he need. outgrow everything in his life. So when grown man go do grown man life and come home and tell you the truth and you snap on him, you just told him, I can't handle the truth yep. because I need to be lied to. And I always say, hoes like to listen. Ooh. So wow. that controversial part. <laughs> it's controversial, <laughs> but usually number two know everything about number one. But is that because they don't have, they don't have responsibility the way that the partner actually does? You know, like the side piece is a side piece. They don't mm -hmm. have the responsibility of, of the main piece. But they the let game. them talk. They do. They do. That is a that is a well-known phenomenon. One, one of the first uh, kind of jobs I had postgraduate was working with sex workers. Mm -hmm. And when you interview them a lot, they absolutely talk about like a lot of men don't feel heard. And they a lot of times you yeah. can just. Strippers have great conversation. Because the, they have their listening they're just listening. right yeah. in a way that when yeah. you're in a relationship with someone, there's so many patterns and dynamics. Sometimes we don't really cultivate our partners to feel heard. Yeah. They're just like we're like talking at each other. Yeah, because everybody's trying to figure it out. Nobody has all the answers. And you don't know what everybody. I, I feel like L.A. is a hospital for sick people that's talented. Mm. And everybody got a limp you don't want them to see. Yeah. But when you see your limp, how does that how do you because mm. love is grace, love and a little bit of amnesia. <laughs> long-term love grace love and a little bit of amnesia and I, I chose my wife because we had an argument when we first started dating mm -hmm. and that was the first time we argued and I felt loved wow she told me about myself mm -hmm. in love it wasn't that I'm gonna destroy you yep. going for the kill Take on the first down. right mm -hmm. I felt loved and I was like if this is what disagreements feel like mm -hmm. I want this because I never had that. I was dating wounded birds and they go for the kill. And yeah, they will cut you. They yeah, will take you your out. Your mama should have swallowed words. you. You will waste the skin. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> oh, whoa. <Lord. laughs> whoa. <laughs> the that crime don't match the punishment. But that's the people I dated because I'm like, and mind you, that's what you chose. I did. You that's what I'm saying. I chose that. Women, right? Yeah. Because I thought you're I could fix it. Recreating that pattern. Yeah. To try to, oh, to yeah. fix it. I'm going to fix it by nature. That's a childhood thing, though. Because I feel like as a child, if I don't fix it, it'll fall apart. In the family, I have to fix it because if I don't, it'll fall apart. And a lot of us bring that into our relationships. And yep. I realized when I met my wife, my tool belt was for me. And it did not feel good because all my tricks, my charm and my funny yep. didn't work with her. because She's charming and she's funny. And I had to use my words. And 
that was uncomfortable. Communicate. You're like, and God hey, was how like, do I you do can this? lean in, become the best version of yourself, or you can run from it. She, yes. It was scary because none of, none of my things work. <laughs> the right one will make you level up every time. Yep. A grown woman make you grow up. Because they'll hold you accountable, plus do it in a way, though, that you can receive, right? And yeah. I think to your guys' point earlier about uh, the way that you train your partner in honesty, right? Uh, a lot of people get on me uh, because I am a huge advocate of you guys guiding each other and coaching each other and um, directing each other's steps, right? Mm -hmm. And people feel, like, well, no, it's just supposed to be God leading you or it's just supposed to be the man leading. And I'm like, no, no, no. We both play an active role in where we take one another Equal because I can destroy my husband's day if I want yes. to. I know the power that I have and vice versa, right? So how am I going to use that power? Am I going to use it for good that day or am I going to use it for evil? And I think that when you have emotional power over a man in particular because you guys don't often succumb to those emotions that when a woman can make you feel and you recognize her being soft or loving or taking care of your ego or whatever however she may be guiding you in that moment that it is refreshing mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. feels like dang you took care of me i want to protect you even more there's no price on peace that's why if you have a conversation with a man and he's talking about what you bring to the table he don't like you <laughs> they don't like you See, if y'all have if a man has a conversation <laughs> hey what do you bring to the table he don't like you because if a man like you there's no price tag on what he'll do to make sure you're happy he sees you as invaluable that the piece my wife gave me my wife does not pay one bill she's pregnant and she made more money than i did when we first got together but now she you know she has a health issue with our you know her pregnancy she don't have to worry about nothing like absolutely nothing and i'm blessed enough to be able to do that but the piece she gives me make sure i'm fed you know, even when she don't cook, she'll be out with her friends like, hey, I'm gonna bring you some food home. You want something like yeah. simple stuff like that. And she's like, how's your heart? You know, that question. Yeah, I think I told you about that. Yep. Asking a man, how's his heart mm -hmm. is a way better question than what's wrong with you. Yep. Come on. Because one is like yes. a, a positive, um, yeah. high vibrational. Why are you being weird? Frame. How's the your heart? Other one sounds accusatory and attacking yes. and trying yes. to tell them how they feel versus making sure that they are loved and safe. Another one I'll has annoyance packed into it. You yeah. Know, like what's wrong with you? Why would I respond to that? You got access. You got access that nobody else has. When a man chooses to love you, you have access. You yes. can't prostitute that because God, I feel like God, your softness is what God uses to give a message to you. Yep. And when you ignore all that and drown it out with the social media and stuff like that, you lose that. So when you translate a message that God gives us, it can be the right message. Mm -hmm. Your tone is wrong. You've missed it. Well, sometimes, too, we will hear what you say, right? We're listening to you or we're trying to listen and we can misinterpret it and feel a way about what you said. Therefore, then going on the defense versus actually responding to what you said. We now want to respond to how it made us feel mm -hmm. what you just said. And I think that because of the misinterpretation, it turns into an explosion where if we just took a beat and say you just said, you know, my wife made me feel good today, right? Mm -hmm. Me saying, well, what do you mean by that? Can you elaborate on that? Right. Allows me more context yeah. to explore what you're sharing. Yeah. Huh. And if we did that in a relationship, we would get more storytelling. We would get more yeah. openness from men and from women too, right? Because it's not just, yes. sometimes yeah, yeah. men shut women down also. Yeah. But us as women, <laughs> we have mm -hmm. a tendency to over talk and we we practice sharing more yeah i think you have to always remember that there's always more to learn about your person you have to stay open you have to stay curious so often we become experts we're like oh i have a, a 10 year a five year a seven year a 20 year book on this person but it's like people are always changing we're always growing we're always interacting with people you may not have realized yet yep. that are helping to change us so you have to listen to your partner and you have to start looking at them with those new eyes because there's a cutie at the office who's listening to them same jokes laughing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. Loud too, when making it feel says, real good. I, when she he don't says, like your jokes. Oh my god, I love comedy. <laughs> you you know? funny as she don't like your son. Oh my god, I love kids. <laughs> that part. You do all that for her and don't get no loving. Where's my scrunchie? <laughs> okay. Always, there's always somebody who First is off, impressed. Not the, not the scrunchie. Y'all don't even the scrunchie. Don't you should like, be using the scrunchie on scrunchie him over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I also feel trouble. like too, we live in a time where I don't think women give men a lot of goodwill. Okay. And that comes from like just Elaborate having trust in the opposite sex. Goodwill, meaning like, uh, I know yes. you're not trying to hurt me, even yes. when you say it wrong. So benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Benefit of the doubt, okay. goodwill, whatever you want to call it. In okay. relationships, we don't have a lot of that because we show up with all this emotional yes. trauma and we try to, we meet this one person and want them to fix their whole childhood. And that's mm -hmm. not fair. That's why it's easy yeah. to blame men versus going to therapy. You're saying 
us as women, we find it easier to blame Social men. media feeds there's into like you not having good yeah, will for men. there's a culture of I agree like all men that. are dogs. All men are not dogs. We are, I think we are per- perpetuating this message. Yes. All men are, I got a lot of friends. there not being any good men out there or very limited number, right? Just because that's maybe one person's experience. Um, so I, I, we I, I'm, in agreeance. The hurt. I'm in agreeance. So yeah. I say there's only two types of men, ladies, no extra charge. There's only two types <laughs> of men. There's regular men and responsible men. Every man are taught to hunt our entire life. But when we finally settle down, we know the value of going home. And so we just mm. want to come home. So regular dude, every dude just want to hunt, but good men just want to come home. And if you find a man who actually wants to come home, you got to ask yourself, how does he feel when he's home? Mm-hmm. Or does he have to sit in the driveway mm-hmm. to give himself a pep talk before he come in the house? Just find a man who want to come home because I still want to hunt. I'm married. Yeah. I still want to hunt as a man. That never goes away. I'm an entertainer. I have access. But I love my wife. I love the peace. And I don't want to mess up our friendship. Yeah. But if you find a man who wants to come home, how does he feel when he's home? Mm. That's your homework. I think you guys are paying attention early on to how does this woman who I'm on a day with her in front of me make me feel? And I don't think that we often are taking accountability for how we show up in making that person feel. We're not cognizant of, I want to trigger these five emotions for him on the first date, right? Us, we know that because we're masters at this and you are aware of it being on the, you know, opposite end. But I don't think that women have been conditioned to be that strategic. Mm -hmm. And I think that's problematic because you need that. You need to be cognizant of that in order to guide him to being attached to you. Yes. Oftentimes when you even when you just shift that energy to thinking about how do I make this person feel? Am I enjoying myself? And honestly, when you go out on these dates, you should be trying to derive joy no matter what. Even if it's a bad day, you right. should be in it's the zone. Gonna fun. Fun. It's still going to have fun. fun. You're still sitting across from another human being, make a connection, have a good time. You're going to be surprised. You're going to stop complaining about how everybody's trash and all the bad <laughs> dates. When you just go with the positive intention of I'm going out to meet another human. We're going to connect. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time no matter what. Right. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a good time. Right. Right. I'm, I'm a good time. Party. Right. I'm right. a party. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I also believe that that strong, independent thing that everybody wears as a badge of honor is not sustainable when a man actually want to take care of you. So you can't wash it off just because you have a commitment because it's still there. Even when I met my wife, there was a bit of that strong, independent. Let me not ask you for nothing because I'm used to taking care of everybody. And I said, babe, you have to let me take care of you. And it wasn't until my wife was in the hospital and couldn't do anything where she saw that moment like, oh, he'll take care of me and I can trust you. But the rebuttal to to that, though, for a a lot of my female listeners would be that they can't find a man who wants to take care of them. What's your. But your softness and all that feminist stuff that men love shouldn't be negotiable. It should be who you are, because when you can't give somebody more than what you can afford to have. Ten more times. It shouldn't be your femininity should not be negotiable. I should not have to do something to get you to be feminine. It should not be Because that means at any yes. time, if you want to take it back, you can. Yes. The things that you require from me, I'm never able to negotiate them. You want me to feel, you want to p- provide, protect, and at least try. Mm-hmm. I can't take those things back at any time because any time you can choose to shut down. Yep. But for me, I have to get married to you to find out if you want to be soft with me. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> also, just like. And dudes get tired. I'm sorry to cut you off. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we get tired. Because at some point, we're not going to keep fighting for you. I don't want to have to fight you for you. That's nope. exhausting. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to get, that's what I said. If a man want to take care of you, it's not sustainable. I know that's what you built your life off of and your career and your passion and big dick energy at work. It does not, sus- oh my it's God. not sustainable when you meet a man who want to take care of you. Eventually, you have to put that somewhere because the ego cannot live in the household. You said earlier before we got on the show, yeah. yes, uh, we were talking and laughing it up, y'all. It's so funny. Even to, I should have recorded behind the scenes um, talking to these two. But you said a man who wants to take care of you doesn't want big dick energy. Absolutely not. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> he said a man with money doesn't want to. A man with money and a man who energy. actually want to take care of you yes. does not want big dick energy. Can you explain what you meant by that right so that we don't just come to our own conclusion mm-hmm. i want you to elaborate I like on that self-explanatory but i'll, I'll i know but you. for the safety of um, my listener <laughs> as, as a black man in hollywood the amount of no's i experience nobody understands uh as a comic i feel i hear no's as an actor i i pay for every audition i hear a no uh, I try to get over in traffic. There's a no. I'm scared if a cop pulls me over. There's a no. The, all these no's. When I come home, I have to fight you mm. to see you. 
I, I made a commitment before I met my wife, and I met my wife before I knew her in my head. Because I said, I want my house to be the safest place on the planet. Yeah. Because mm. of how I was raised. I was like, my house has to be the safest place so on the planet. We don't raise too. our voice. We do pillow fights. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can say how you feel. Because I feel like the healthier your relationship is, is the first draft of what you really want to say. The first? The first draft. You when you send a text keep... message, you got all caps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how I really feel. And by the time you really send that, you just put, okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. My wife and I had an argument during quarantine. Our first year of marriage was in quarantine. And we did five years and two summers. Uh, <laughs> really? It we was, had a it was, really <laughs> bad argument like where that. I felt like my wife kept taking jabs at me. Every mm-hmm. time I would say something to her, she would say something slick. And I'm like, yo, look, I'm trying to communicate and tell you how I feel. Because I feel like every time I say something... You take jabs at me. And she was like, wow, that's funny. Because when I tried to tell you how I felt, you shut me down. Do you remember we had the conversation about this? And I was like, ooh, mm. you right. So from that point on, we always say how we feel up front. And there's, it might be a little sarcasm. And we'll put orange juice on it. Yeah. The medicine don't feel good. Mm-hmm. Even if it's true, we'll say some slick stuff. But it's funny. Our house, our superpower is being funny. Yeah. We say that thing and we move on. Okay. Because before, she used to leave. When I said something and we had an argument, she's like, I'm leaving because I don't want to hurt you. And I'm like, but why would you want to hurt me? And she was like, well, I'm used to saying, I'm African. African people, they don't do filters. They like, (laughs) they say how they feel. And they give you the first draft. That's the household she grew up in. For my me, my husband is Caribbean. He says the same thing. Well, we don't we don't sugarcoat it like you Americans. They do. And they I'm like, give me sugar. What? Add the sugar. <laughs> right. Add the sugar. Put the medicine right. in the middle. <laughs> she used to leave, and I'm mad. I'm like, yo, I'm the guy who's trying to have the conversation, the hard conversation. Yeah. You, I can't have, I can't, because if I process by myself, I'm going dark. Wow. I can't fix the us problem by myself. Yeah. I'm asking you to help me comb through this and make sure I'm processing this right. And we got to a point where literally we say what we need to feel. We was like. She was like, because I was still broken from my previous when I met my wife. And she was like, I don't know what you got going on, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. You need to fix that. So you feel like the big dick energy is essentially the hardness that you feel. It comes from fear. It's rooted in fear of some sort. And every argument is either over pride, ego, or fear. But usually big dick energy in a woman comes from fear because you were never allowed to be soft. So you live in that. All of that over-independence is a trauma response. That people just need generational to generational trauma. Yeah. It's a need your mama, you see your mama be like that. You've never control. seen your mama be soft. It's a need for control. This is yeah. these are areas. It's not that, wrong, FYI. I don't know if you're, it's never wrong, but it's not sustainable. It's not helpful. It's in so, a relationship. I'm not gonna say that it's not not wrong. I'm gonna say that it doesn't serve usually your goal for it's, love. The yeah. bottom line is it sustainable. Anything you do in your relationship, even as a man, there's certain things that men do, it's not sustainable. Like the more you eat before you get married, the more your the appetite you create before you get married, you got to sustain that. You play like you practice. Even men, like Agreed. we chase women. That we're taught to chase and conquer. And yeah. the more you feed the monster, the more the monster want to yeah. eat. And when you get married, no matter who it is, whoever you choose, that routine does not feel good. And it takes away the excitement. Men are excited by the chase. A lot of times smashing chicks, just the chase of it makes us feel it's a part of the, the whole mm-hmm. sexual yeah. thing. Because I can conquer somebody who yeah. ain't paying me no attention. Oh, I'm going to make her laugh at me. If I make you laugh, your jaw's coming off. You know what I'm saying? And we'll <laughs> conquer you. I think that, but I've heard that many, many times. <laughs> For real, like most, I didn't have money, but I had charm and funny. Mm-hmm, if I make you laugh, mm-hmm. your jaw's coming off. No, he I'm not is buying important. your drink. I'm sorry, you need to make me laugh. Like yeah. entertainment. Right. So when I talk about my pizza, it's entertainment is on my pizza. I, I cannot <laughs> even have you as a friend if you are boring. Like, I'm sorry. Hey. As yeah. a friend or lover, That's if why you are boring. Entertainment. like fun guys. Right. Yes. You like the fun guy. Wait, it might so, not be sustainable, but you like the fun. So let's. So I want to talk back about the honesty thing because it sounds like you and your partner have a very honest relationship, as do you, mm-hmm. and as do I, of course. But a lot of people in their dating phase, right, have been dishonest with each other and still marrying the person, hoping that the the trust would come back, and then they see that the person is still dishonest, whether it's little white lies or whether it's huge catastrophic big lies. Do you think once a liar, always a liar? I think with any behavior, you know, the best predictor of of future behavior is past behavior unless there is an intervention. A body at motion stays in motion and body at rest stays at rest unless there is something that crashes into it and changes the way that it does. So there is no, I've decided to change this because I woke up this morning and I need to apologize. (laughs) We need to see the action, the intention, the time and consistency behind that intended change. So I'll never say that people can't change because obviously I'm in the work of changing people. I know that people change concretely, but it takes a lot of 
work, a lot of investment, a lot of intention, Mm -hmm. a lot of consistency, a lot of emotional, you know, investment Mm -hmm. to actually change. So just the words I'm going to change. Absolutely not. The, the effort, the consistency. And what I usually tell people is when somebody has changed, truly changed, they don't have to tell you. You They'll know, show, yeah. <laughs> You'll know, like yeah. you will know. You will see the change. You will be able to remark upon it. The way that they approach you, the way that they offer the apology, it, it will just all feel different, and you'll know the change has happened. I think in our profession, though, we see a lot of infidelity sometimes. Of yeah. um, can you can I'm, I'm coming to try to heal this relationship, right? Can mm-hmm. can you guys um, you know, help me and. While we do have a desire to assist and guide them through those experiences, uh, I'm sure you're used to also seeing um, the man try to, or whoever was unfaithful, try to make gestures towards, here's Mm -hmm. me proving to you that I'm being honest, or here's me, you know, trying to show up for you differently. And because you still are unwounded and haven't healed from those traumatic experiences you're you're never believing it you're still blinded to the past experience not seeing what's in front of you what advice do you have for clients when you see that it's a reaction to the past not a reaction to the present I think we're always learning in a healthy relationship you're always learning to cultivate more empathy and you're always learning to cultivate a spirit of forgiveness you are not going to make it married if you cannot forgive Mm. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Right so, there. <laughs> that a part. A little bit of amnesia. <laughs> that, that part. You are not going to make it in a relationship if you do not know how to forgive. And when I say forgive, I don't just mean your partner. I also mean yourself. Facts. But in order to forgive yourself, you have to have introspection about your part of the equation. And that's the part that I find a lot of people don't want to take ownership of. But I'm certainly not saying that when you were dating a boo and they've gone out there and they have 15, 17 different people and you yeah. find the text messages that it is your fault that they did that right but there is always a opportunity to look at yourself and say what about my pattern do I keep missing certain signs mm-hmm. about the character of a person because character always shows up early yep. it don't show up year six when they suddenly did the it flags there's were been, there. there's we been these them. pieces you yep. know what I mean so like what about me makes me overlook this part of a person's character what about me makes me not hold people accountable because mm-hmm. a lot of times a person will have lied to you in certain ways and you didn't do anything mm-hmm. because you just wanted the love or you just wanted the hugs or you just wanted the sex you want the acceptance exactly that's usually what it is so you there's always an opportunity for you to introspect with yourself yeah. but I really think that you know after some type of infidelity once you have decided to move forward with the relationship you are going to have to work on not forgiving them once but constantly forgiving them and not going back and drug, mm-hmm. dredging up the past it's like a dog you know what I mean if if a dog keep digging up a bone keep digging up a bone okay yep. well fine have the damn bone yep. you know because yeah. I'm not gonna sit here when I'm trying to create yeah. a new relationship and you just keep going back and back and back and back to the past so I have yeah. a lot of people who really struggle with that but I always notice a shift when you know I let people have their heat for a little bit because that's yeah. a natural part of it right yeah. there's a natural part of I'm angry with you and that anger doesn't expire in a day because of the amount of pain that this betrayal has you know caused our relationship but there is kind of a delineation it's a gray area where you have to start shifting and making that corner Mm -hmm. you have to and the key pivotal point I always feel like is when I turn the tables on them and say okay you're saying you forgive them but have you forgiven yourself and they're like me what do I have to forgive myself (laughs) for and I'm like well let's talk about it that's why you're here you know I call that updating your software. At some point, you got to update your software to get to where you're at. And I believe every couple is one conversation away from the relationship they want to be in. Because mm. we're scared to have that hard conversation. conversation. There's yeah. one <laughs> pending hard conversation that most couples get stuck at. <laughs> like, but this still starts at one pending thing that is. Okay, that opens the onion. Yeah. You're, you're, you're managing layers, somebody's yeah. fears in the meantime yeah. until you have that conversation. Mm-hmm. And on the other side of that is the truth, the freedom, and everything that you really want to have. Yeah. yeah. Because sometimes it, it requires, there's no intimacy without vulnerability. And you got to be vulnerable and be like, hey, look, when you did this, it made me feel like this. But I never, I was trying to make sure I didn't want to be judgmental. So I allowed it to go on all this time. And eventually it's going to seek out. Space not your truth doesn't mean the truth isn't there. Sometimes you got to acknowledge like, hey, look, this is what it is. And um, sometimes too, when you mess up the work of trying to right the wrong, people ain't built for that. Yeah. What do you mean? Meaning like if you wrong somebody, like I met, I met a guy and he was like, man, 
I chose to move out to LA, but I met this girl. I think she's my person. But when I got into a car accident, she took care of me, blah, blah, blah. But I moved to LA and he was like, should I fight for her? And I was like, bro, the amount of work that's required for you to even get her back, you might not be built for it. Ah, okay. So it, I'm in Because he could have came out here with her. I'm in he agreement cho- with you on that. This is what, to, so to Brie, when I asked you the question earlier about infidelity, what I will often see is while he is saying, maybe I'm just using he as an example, um, while he is saying, I want to work for the relationship and I want us to heal and I'm going to try to mm-hmm. make things right by her, he does not necessarily want to do the work of what it takes for her healing process, right? Because while she has to do some internal work as well, he is contributing to her self-esteem. He is contributing to her confidence in the relationship. Mm -hmm. He is contributing to her idea of trust Mm -hmm. now. It takes two parties. And sometimes you don't want to have to do the work. It's just easier to go get somebody else with a clean slate who doesn't hold you accountable to past behaviors or who doesn't have a memory or recollection of what you're capable of. And a lot of times it comes down to ego because a lot of people don't, again, there's that period where it's hard and you've apologized and the person is still mad at you, right? Your ego has to be real low, real low, real low. That's the work I'm talking about. You can't, you you have to be, everybody ain't built for that work to repair the wrong. Correct. Some people are like, yeah, no, nah, I said sorry once and I'm good. I'm yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what you yeah. mean? You just paid me to help you for 90 days uh, heal this. And then and like, no, nah, no, nah, she's going to be like this. Like, she, I don't need mm-hmm. to take this. I'm like, no, right. no, no, you do. Because she's right. still broken. Mm-hmm. She's still wounded. She's yeah. still hurt. And mm-hmm. I kind of feel like that's why God permitted divorce. Meaning like, because when you wrong somebody, they literally become God in your life. Because you have to prove to them every day that you're worthy of whatever they and if they choose not to update their software, you can spend the rest of your marriage trying to repair this one thing that they're not going to upgrade. I God doesn't do us like that. Like God a, doesn't do us like that. Become God in your life. They mm-hmm. literally become God because every day you have to bow down and you whatever. You get them into believing that you are this person. I'm like worthy of whatever love faith. you want to give not me. Not if they huh. show up to my couch because we're not doing those power dynamics. <laughs> oh, I, I agree. <laughs> I, 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 mean? like, I agree. I There's work to be done by both, but I'm like, it's an ongoing thing where literally, again, the person's going to be I don't feel better. I'll make you. I'll make you suffer until I feel better. So, so, so if, yeah. if both people I don't do though, the work, that's a toxic one. Oh, that of is, but I don't think that people are that evolved yet to where they know how to still be loving and be hurt at the yes. same time. I yes. think that they're that's they tough. are suffering. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you should experience in this yes. suffering with me. And yes. if I see you happy while I'm unhappy, and you haven't made me happy again yet, I'm gonna take you down with me. That's and dangerous. I think that's the hard part with staying with someone who has betrayed you, someone yeah. who has lied to you. Yeah. It is very hard to love them through that and show up behaviorally yes. with love when you don't want to. You want them to experience the torture that you've experienced. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Again, you're going to be on this journey. You're going to be working on your forgiveness, your empathy, and your humility. Because when somebody hurts you, you are setting the tone for what's going to happen when you hurt them. And I don't say if you if you hurt them. I say when you hurt them. Because if you really are in something for a lifetime, hurt, betrayal is a part of relationships eventually. It may not be the same way, yeah. right? It may not they be that access. I went and cheated on you, right? Mm-hmm. But it may be that I... I loan my sister money without mm-hmm. consulting you, which is a type of betrayal, yeah. right? Or when things got chaotic with the family, I didn't come and support you the way that you needed to when you were when you lost your job. I wasn't as attentive to you because I was so worried about my thing. That's mm-hmm. a type of betrayal. And you are going to want them to forgive you. You're going to want them yeah. to be humble. You're going to want them to give you the benefit of doubt and show up for you in that relationship. So to really be in these long-term relationships, there's so much self-reflection and self-work that you're always going to be yeah. cultivating. Yeah. It's, it's, a, also, it's, never, it's never an ending process. I also yeah. feel like there's a perceived cheater too. And we, we're talking about different levels. I'm not talking about like just flat out cheating, but there's a cheating toward the relationship that happens on both parts. Like, if you're checking in with your person every day, you can kind of get a feel that something's not right. Mm-hmm. But if you enjoy the space of them just not being in your space, mm. like, I'm glad you're not here. I'm glad ah. you're just out of my way. <laughs> you're giving them opportunity to do what they got to do. Not that you deserve it, but there's still a level of betrayal towards the relationship where your trade off for it is I get the peace that I want. But what about so? I feel like because I have listeners who actually will do what we say. Right. What about the person who's listening? That's like, so this is why I 
text him and I make him share his location. This is why I want to know where he's doing, who, with the, what, what time is he coming home, who he's <laughs> with, where is he going, mm -hmm. because I don't want to give him that space to go out on the guy's trip because if he goes on the guy's trip, yeah. he's going to cheat. I do have those people who really believe that no, they have to keep a tabs on you or you will do Humans going to do what they're going to do. A prison wrong. warning. Humans going to do what they got to do. But for me and my wife, what I learned is I check in when I'm out. While I'm out, I'm like, hey, babe, thinking about you. We both have a policy. We check in with each other while we're out. So instead of her waiting on her to call me mm -hmm. and I'm on my heels like, oh, I'm going to be home. You know, oh, what's up, babe? How, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's our policy. Everybody's different. But there should be some freedom in love. There shouldn't be feel like mm -hmm. you're being police and you got to yeah. share your yeah, stuff and yeah. give me your password because I don't care to go through her phone. And luckily, I'm blessed enough. My wife don't care to go through my phone. And I'm like, we just have freedom in our relationship. But yeah. we check in with each other all the time. So there's never a moment where I'm going for like four hours of not checking in ever. So ever for the people who are saying I have to check the phone. Otherwise, I don't want to create that opportunity. My question that I always challenge people with is, th is this the first time you've been this way in a relationship? Because <laughs> usually it's a pattern. Yeah, usually there's insecurities like, prior. Okay, this is the good will thing. You know what I'm saying? The good will thing I mentioned. Mm -hmm. if, if every relationship you have to have this prison regulation, uh, you know, like the idea behind being a prison guard is that the people who are in prison are bad guys. We know that's not. Oh, it's true, right? <laughs> Let me say there that right now. Some people who are right? aren't supposed to be right, <laughs> but and so we do things from an adversarial perspective. Of I don't trust you to behave the way that I think uh, will will is the value that I have. Mm -hmm. So I have to hold you accountable with all these measures. Yep. So my challenge is: is why are you with people that you have to be a prison guard for? And the rebuttal to that will be because I love him, because I love her. No, love is not love is not jealous. Love is not controlling. Those are power and control dynamics, and you have some self-reflection to do. There's probably some past trauma. Maybe you observed Man. that from somebody, right? But you are you are in a current relationship with a current person, and they cannot pay for the sins of the past. Those things are gone. Those you, those ghosts in your relationship, you need to have an exorcism and get rid of them. You have to be <laughs> with the person who you are how with. How do you get rid of that? For the people who don't know how to unpack all that untrusting stuff, how do you even start for that? Because well, some people don't know. They think it's like, this is just how love is, and that's not love. No, it's not. You, how do you start? You change yourself. I think you can go to therapy as a, as a definite a great thing start. to <laughs> get through the trauma and, and figure out what are your, your triggers and whatnot. But honestly, if this keeps coming up in your loving relationships, get thyself to a dating coach. Thank you. <laughs> right? Because an expert you, in relationships. It, because I think the therapy will help you with the self-awareness piece, yeah. right? Like, this is who I am, and this mm -hmm. is why I do what I do. The coaching helps you with the transformational work of the different behaviors and patterns yes. that you will then create. And that's the only way to convince yourself mm -hmm. when you've seen change in, you know, the, the results and outcome yeah. that like there is a better way. There is yeah. a better life. I can have a better partnership. I can choose better quality people. Yeah. So I think it's it's twofold. I think that, it, Absolutely. you know, but I think most people are starting with like right now. You know, talking to friends and then going to podcasts and then you know, so your friends can't way, save you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Stop the same listening boat as you. to friends that. Uh, let me not say stop listening to single friends. I need to be more specific. Stop listening to people who are not in healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. That if you had to switch places with them tomorrow, you would not want their position, right? So if they are in an incredible, loving, amazing, healthy relationship, we can take their advice. If they are not. It's a little questionable to you me. Got a whole sermon yes. on that. Yes. <laughs> like I always say, like I don't take housing advice from the homeless. I don't take financial advice from people in the, in the poorhouse, yeah. right? Because you can't. Although you may, you you're a human, and every human has worth, right? And a broken clock is right twice a day, so there may be yeah. one or two nuggets that mm -hmm. you can give me at some point. However, if if where I want to go is so far above where you actually are. Yeah. What you are going to give me in terms of value, it's not going to be what I need. It's not going to get me to where I need. Well, to go. they can speak to the pitfalls, right? I think that they can speak to the, yeah. this is how you can go broke. This is how you can go mm -hmm. homeless. This is how That's you can. That's what I said. There's a piece yeah, of nugget sure. in there. Yeah. Uh, this is how you can, you know, even um, lose out on love or, you know, maybe uh, divorce. But mm -hmm. To get back from that, to the recovery piece of this is how you become successful again. Yes. I think they need to be in that success to be able to teach you mm -hmm. that part. So I'm in yeah. complete agreement with you. I have a follow-up question for you. Yes. Uh, so I had a joke I used to do, and I was like, men lie to women and women lie to themselves. Yes. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have laughed. Because uh, <laughs> my question funny. is, how do you coach a woman and get her into reality? Because sometimes I feel like, <laughs> Respectfully, not all women <laughs> live in a certain space that's not real. Example, yeah. um, 
you're mad at a guy by the way he's moving, but you're not in a committed relationship. Correct. Mm -hmm. Meaning like you've had intimacy and all the other stuff and you're mad at him. Because in my head, I feel like in L.A., everybody dating somebody. It just depends on who asks. Yep. And you should not assume they're talking to nobody. But I've seen chicks sleep with a guy get mad at him and like i need to know why he doing what he doing yeah. i'm like your spirit he told you what he wasn't looking for nothing when i was going through my little heartbreak i told women i wouldn't look for nothing and they still and I, that's why i mentioned i was a husband i always wanted to be a husband <laughs> but i was a hoe in the meantime until i figured it out like what do you do in the meantime if you really have a good date mm-hmm. you know why you're trying but i was honest about where i was and i'm like what do you do in the meantime but to them they were like you led me on and i'm yeah. like i never took you on a date we had that the Dracula. we clue. had the dracula yeah. schedule <laughs> We had the Dracula schedule and you're mad at me. And I told you I wasn't looking for nothing. Nothing changed. You said you weren't looking for nothing. And then you caught feelings and you're like, oh, you're a good guy. Where's this mean? Or like when women break up with a guy and they're like, we broke up. And I'm like, I'm back in the streets. And they were like, well, when we broke up, that means you need to work on yourself while we're not together. And I'm like, we're not together. If you break up with me, like, why would you break up with somebody and work on it? Like, love is working through that thing when it doesn't feel good. The I'm back in the street. <laughs> the breaks is stupid. No, the break, I didn't that's ask a for whole this. Nother, that's and a you want me to be loyal while take a break. That's you give me something I didn't episode. ask for. You know what I? Me hear, and process is different. What I hear is a lot of it is about expectations, and expectations are premeditated resentments. So if you had an expectation, if that man did not tell you that that's what he's going to do, mm-hmm. and you had an expectation, you are setting yourself up. To be resentful when that thing does. Oh, happen. and the committee. Once you tell the committee and your friends commit to it, where's it going with you and my friend? See, why? Why are you telling your homegirl? You started off with talking about too. like uh, you still being kind of like in the streets or whatever. And so when a woman's dating you early on, I think there are important questions that you need to ask. Right? Yeah. Is there is there someone right now who would be hurt if they knew that we were out on this date or that we were together? Is there a woman right now who wishes or that she could switch spots with me? in this seat right I think there's and we look at how they respond not just what the answer is but do I believe him in this moment and his answer okay and then I think that too there needs to be we having it a day two though because that's a lot of ego (laughs) in a day two date conversation (laughs) do you really want to know that I think that and you're not giving me none I don't think that needs to be first date because I haven't even invested in you emotionally yet to care about that people do that though so yes yes they do and I think that that's when it turns into an interview and not us just yes, getting to connecting. see if like we have a connection or any mm-hmm. chemistry, right? I think that later on those questions start to revolve around compatibility, right? So we first look for chemistry when we first initially start dating. How does this person make me feel? Is there a spark? Then compatibility comes in when we acknowledge that we do or are fond of this person. And then we say, okay, do we have similar interests, shared hobbies? Um, Is this person someone who believes in a commitment? What does that look like? And where are they in their life to be able to give me that? Are we on the same page? What's our intention? Mm -hmm. And then also... I think we need to look at what does this communication look like? What does it feel like? How do they handle me during conflict resolution? Uh, what are these, you know, what, how do they speak? Yeah. So I, I think early on, if we start looking for that at date number one and two, that's way too soon. I yeah. think in the beginning, it should just be like, do I like how I feel when I'm right. in front of this person? I tell every every one of my daters, I, I tell them, like, I want you to work under the natural assumption that they are seeing other people. And so are you. Facts. Always, Period. always got to remember that. Work under that assumption and that's going to really help guide you. Oh. Right? But why? So you oh. have to, so let me ask, you, you I want to ask her on that thing because I think that, I, think, oh. I do think this is a, a question that people avoid or that they lie about is if they are seeing other people, right? So like, mm-hmm. let me say that I swipe on you. Mm-hmm. We go out on a couple dates. You go on a date and then maybe don't pick up my call. Mm-hmm. But then you tell me that you were at your mom's house, maybe, or with your homeboy, but mm-hmm. really you were on the date. Mm-hmm. Why are we lying about that? Why can't we just not say I was on a date with another person? My I- policy is it's none of my business until we fall in love or until it's a thing. Yes. Because you don't really want the answer. You really don't so want the answer. You just want to know if you got competition. Right. I believe that if if somebody tells you I was out with my mom, they were out with their mom. Take it there. Why is your mind working all the wheels to see if they're da- dating another person? Because I told you to work on the natural assumption that they're on other dates. But <laughs> but the question mean? might not. Have, so the question might not have been posed. It may not be, okay. you know, where were you yesterday? Yeah. It may just be like, oh, sorry that I missed your call. I was with my mom. The, 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 they're lying voluntarily uh-huh. to not hurt your feelings. Yeah. yeah. 
I am under the a different notion though that I think that we should all be telling each other. So that I was we are out with somebody else, seeing other people. Absolutely, I just think you that need to know that I am not committed to you. I feel and like women should keep dating until he says you're my thing. You you're my person. You need to know that I am still on the market as a woman. I am still on the market, and people are courting me. If you want to take me off of the market, you need to commit. Therefore, you need to know I was on a date the other night. And if you have a problem with the competition, you need to step your game up, yeah. or you ain't the man for me. If you see them as competition. I think I think if a, if a man tells you he was on another date, it's going to come off as rude and slightly like he is trying to make you go into competitive mode. So I would if I would not hmm. advise a male dater to do that. I would advise him to make up an excuse that falls under. <laughs> so I would. Lie. I would. I, you I don't can't care. Tell I'm telling you. Really I know you what that I sounds. You because yeah. here's the thing. That's I, a strong I should. People, I don't make the rules, man. I don't make the rules. Nah. I just tell you the cheat code. Can't. You know what I mean? No. So male client, I'm gonna tell him, do not tell a girl you was on another date just tell her that you were in a business meeting you got caught up whatever you don't need to tell her this because the relationship does not support the honesty there's not enough intimacy mm. to support that honesty 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 painful honesty right is a type of intimacy and you're trusting the other person to be mature and to respond well but you don't know this person from adam you've gone on two dates with them you don't know how they respond to negative things so you could shoot yourself in the foot being too given too many details but then that mean but shouldn't we that should be is a very strong word honest so that we can yeah. see how they handle honesty if you can't handle me going out on a date with somebody else while we are not in a committed relationship and we haven't decided that we're growing yet why am i lying to you about my schedule that means that either i'm trying to maybe allegedly protect you but that's really about protecting myself i don't like the possibility of how you're going to respond or react to my truth. Mm -hmm. And I don't like the way it makes me feel to have to handle your feelings with the truth. I just oh, think that sometimes a filter is necessary. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like we have the, the principle behind the matter, right? I should be able to go to work wearing whatever I want, talking however I want. <laughs> and people always find me professional. Right. But, like, the but the reality is, is the reality of the world that we live in is that people respond to impression. They respond to how you look. They respond to your hairstyle. They respond to all those things. So I can either choose to do what I need to do to get, ahead how I need to get ahead how to move yeah how yes. to navigate. or I can just martyr myself and be like nah I'm about to come up here covered in all the things and wearing all the bangles and yeah. all the things and mm -hmm. just hope that a person accepts me for the fullness of who I am so I kind of tell my I, I tell people like I want you to stay in the rules for the first part of dating obviously when you're in a relationship you should be honest Right. But again, in a relationship, there's a, a level of agreement and there's a level of intimacy to support that honesty. And I think saying so this is a really good debate. y'all. And I'm curious to see when you guys listen to this episode, what you think. I think that we are because energy is so important. I think that we are setting the tone of the relationship for excusable lies early on mm -hmm. when we mask our daily schedule or what we're doing in order to avoid judgment or criticism or whatever that thing may be. Because then for me to say, well, now we're in a committed relationship. I'm going to flip the switch and now I'm going to be a transparent person. I think you want to know early on, is this person going to tell me, even if it hurts my feelings, is this person going to tell me because we, we admitted to transparency and not honesty, right? Honesty is sometimes like if I'm asking you, transparency is giving me the information regardless. I want a transparent relationship. However, just put it in a way that I can digest. Don't lie to me, right? You don't gotta, you go, you ain't gotta say like, spicy, you ain't mm -hmm. shit today. Mm -hmm. You can say, baby, I would appreciate it if, you know, you made sure that my food was ready on yes. time, right? Like you can, yeah. the way you word it is everything. But that's also I the assumption that you're on the same page because y'all lie too. Like for some reason, women are so busy until after you have sex and then they schedule just happen to open up. <laughs> And if I ask you Wait, why are you so Ron busy, calling us out right now. Because if I ask you why you're so busy and you're comparing me to the guy who is actually paying your rent, you don't want to have that conversation. Because ah. I bring my heart and he's paying your rent, but at the same time you're torn in the meantime. Because I've had that happen to me too, and I'm like, she's not going to tell me that. But you want me to be honest about my other dates? I'm like, we all lie. I just feel like women lie better. I, I, I would agree. Y'all say the, stuff like so I'm hanging out with you my just friends. Gave as a lie is a really good example. And right? I think the key it's a word, really good example. Y'all, I have dated a dude. One was paying my rent. I had time for the one that was paying my rent. Right. <laughs> he got a whole family. He got a whole situation going on. You're two, you're Tuesday in his life, but you choose to commit to him. But the guy who's showing up with his heart, you like, I don't know. Maybe he ain't tall enough. Maybe his money ain't right. And you like, 
remind him that you're not. You have to work tonight. I also that it's a, is, a lie is a lie. It's hilarious. We do so. We do do. I'm, I'm and I'm switching back right from like. Go ahead. I, I'm what I, what I was. But so in my agreeance with you in saying yes, I have done that. That was a certain phase of my life. I would never do that. Now. But that's what I'm saying. It's all. It's all until <laughs> you agree about the relationship out. where the honesty is expected. Relationship is the key word because you said. <laughs> And once we're in a relationship, you're going to say, yes, once we're in a relationship, it is different than when I I'm owe you casually nothing in the dating beginning. people that I don't, I don't owe you nothing. It's none of my business. I owe you nothing except what I owe the average human that I'm trying to But expect. I think we are practicing for the relation. Why do I want to be to someone? Why do I want to all of a sudden commit, right, to someone who has been telling me that they've only been seeing me when really they were seeing five other people? Are oh, you no, that's a lie. Did he say, no, no, that's, that's a, I'm right. only seeing you? Because that's yeah. a very strong statement. That's a strong lie. I am saying that while we are telling our clients that's like, also assuming there's let them a commitment assume involved that there's multiple people. Yes. I would rather you not lie to me about who you're with and what you're doing. You didn't get parameters when you first asked yeah, the question. Two things. If if you if I ask you, are you seeing other people? And you tell me, no, I'm only seeing you. But then you're lying and actually seeing other people. That is a totally different type of lie. Absolutely. Because that's a type of manipulation. Right. Right. To make me believe that you are more invested in me than you are saying um, I sorry, I couldn't get statement. to your call last night. I was with my mom when really you were on a date and then you talked to your mom for 20 minutes. That is a different intention behind why right. you said I was with my mom versus I don't want to tell her I was on a date because I don't want to be a jerk and make her feel rude. Yeah. I want to follow up the call and I want us to right. talk and, and have a good I think both are masking your true feelings and intentions. I don't think that the person who is lying about being with mom versus not like based on the timing of where they're at is really looking out for the person who they're lying to. I think that that is about self. In each of those situations, I think it is, I don't want to deal with this person's emotional baggage that comes with the honesty. And I think that is very important that we need to address in this episode is... I lie because I don't want to have to deal with you. That is facts. You don't want to yeah. deal with the person's emotional baggage because you're not in a relationship with him, you know? Right. <laughs> but I also think, right. so there's a, okay, well then there's a challenge that I would say. For the person on the receiving end, uh, don't ask the questions that you are not ready to know the answers Man. to. Which we do for all the, the person, time, though. Dean, yes, we do that all for the, the time. person on the other end, don't give details that are a lie, right? Just say like, sorry, I couldn't get to your call last night. How are you I'm doing? I'm with that. Yeah. I, so I, I'm more in agreement with that. But what I will see, though, is the lies about the the things that they're doing. And I just think that, that like we aren't setting ourselves up for success when we do that. If we if we believe ourselves to be an honest person, and we're not practicing that. Well, sometimes people put too much on it. Like, if we not like that. Yeah, I feel like that's a lot to ask somebody. To um, be honest. No, no, no. I'm saying like, it's a are we saying we're in a committed relationship? I completely understand what everything you're saying, but sometimes people have situationships and it's messy and never give a man more than you can afford to lose. When you date, two things you need to know. One, does he want what you want? And two, is he ready? So that's timing and alignment, right? So like what right. we spoke to earlier about compatibility. I think though, what you're touching on now though is oftentimes we will say, yes, we can handle and take whatever you have to give an offer. But then emotions get involved, right? Mm -hmm. And we become attached and then want the commitment that you said you were not willing to give and we stay anyways. Majority of us yeah. who are in situationships are not because we just want to have casual sex. Yes. It's usually because we are interested mm -hmm. and attached to someone who does not want to commit to us. Mm -hmm. And if they did offer the commitment, we would absolutely take it. But yes. because they're not, we would stay anyways. And that is problematic within itself because during that window, you are missing out on the self-growth component and the dating component of finding someone who you are equally yoked with and potentially in alignment with time-wise that would be committed to you. Yes. Yeah. And as my great teacher says, the person that's willing to leave, leave the dealership gets the best deal. <laughs> I like that it. part. You got the we, answer we you need. need. To put that on a bumper sticker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got the answer you need. He's showing you everything you need to know. If you keep yes. staying after that, at some point, you're not a victim. You're a volunteer. I Agreed. always tell my daters, like, the moment that you are so concerned when you're afraid that you're going to lose them, you've lost. Right? Before in a relationship. Like, yeah. when you're in a relationship, obviously, you want to yeah. cultivate and keep your relationship. But when you're in the dating stage and you're just afraid, afraid, afraid that you're going to lose them, already that that's kind of showing you that there's some type of power imbalance. There's some type of worth differentiation yep. where mm -hmm. you feel like there's a there's a sense of I'm not worthy and this person is going to recognize mm -hmm. that I'm not worthy. So that's your trigger for like, I need to go back to ground zero, do yeah. some self work, yeah. do some empowerment. 
because you should not be dating people and and afraid. Get worried you're gonna get left. Yeah. Yes, tiptoeing because also that tiptoeing sets you up for something later on. Sets you up for the overgiving. Sets yeah. you up for compromising your morals, compromising your values. And earlier you had said something that reminded me of this quote that my mom said. And she said, you know, don't start nothing that you don't want to have to finish. Mm. Like in the beginning of your relationship, do not start doing a bunch of things that that you you do not want to have to keep up with. He didn't ask for that. (laughs) That part. He did not ask for all that. That part. You're giving too much. You got to have nuance to your dating and your love. Mm And some, he got to earn it. I will say that what we, and and you kind of asked about this earlier, Ron, was the, um, we get. Try to bring them back to reality? We get, no. (laughs) You didn't answer that yet, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, so it was the two questions, right? It was the, um, oh, how I bring my clients back to reality. Yeah. Okay, I was going somewhere else with this, but um, so I'll answer that once again. I just want to bring up the point really quick about sex because I think that while we're on the topic of um, losing focus of reality, actually, when we become physically intimate, right, and we give our bodies, oftentimes there are chemicals that are going on that now we are experiencing, you know, all this, you know, oxytocin. Mm -hmm. And we are now in a situation where we feel more bonded and connected to someone than we Mm -hmm. actually really are. So we aren't able to, with clarity, make the healthiest of decisions. Mm -hmm. So I don't say necessarily take uh, sex off the table if you're dating someone. What I like to say is let's explore the other areas of intimacy first. If you can't have emotional intimacy, if you cannot have intellectual intimacy, if you cannot have yeah. recreational intimacy, if you cannot have spiritual intimacy and financial intimacy with someone prior to the physical intimacy, we have a problem because you're not going to get those ones right. after the physical has gone down. It's a lot harder to retrace yeah. your steps. So I say, like, let's experience those. Let's have conversations about our upbringing mm-hmm. and our childhood and how your parents manage money and why I my view is the way that it is. And, you know, uh, where, why my spirituality is what it like. Let's have those conversations. So yes. the point that I now trust you yeah. and then I will give my body to you. We'll hang out if you're a good time. If you're a good time, <laughs> if you're a good time and I just enjoy being in your space and I'm like, you know, I feel like she can raise my kids. I will want to hang out with you even because dudes that get it mm-hmm. often, you're not worried about not getting it. That is very true. Yeah. When yeah. you get it often, you're not worried about Because, like, for me, I did more damage because I never asked for it. See, and... and I never asked for that's, it. But that's also a tool in your toolbox, though. Because you not asking for it makes us even wonder, yeah. like, well, why is, yeah. why is he trying to come yeah. for it? I'm going to throw this thing I never. I don't know how to small talk. And I always talk like a husband. And I never ask for the booty. So that's and even she'll be like, more delicious. Wrong with me? We want I never that even more. It. I always tell my man, I'm like, hold out. Do not go for the kills. Do not sleep with Even him. if the energy mm-hmm. is there. Yep. Yes. Yeah. It's for like sure. Because I was actually <laughs> celibate for a while too. And for me, that was my superpower because I would be with a girl and I'm like, you feel that? She like, what? And I would get close. I'm like, do you feel that? She's like, what? <laughs> I was like, do you feel that? She was like, I like that. You're creating the false reality or the false sentiment of connection. You're telling them what you want them to believe. You, Pisces, I feel everything. You, you, but you oh, are yeah. saying, do you Deeply feel that emotional. connection? Do you feel that connection? And while she may not, you have convinced her to feel the connection, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't convinced her. It was there. Example. That's why I ask women. Was it? Because sometimes we want to be like so much that we I think start that it was to. There no, it was there. When, uh, I'm around a lot of people a man, as a comedian. He'd be talking about, you feel what I feel. You'd be like, uh, no. You know, like when, <laughs> right. when the right. guy sometimes who's most attracted to you, you don't want. And he's like, <laughs> I just, we have such a good connection. And you're yeah. like, I feel nothing. But, but if you're someone like Ron G, though, you can create connection with a lot of people through your charm. Right. I can make, yeah. I can go on 20 days and make all of them feel like I'm ready to get married. They are, they're not like, all the same. Yeah. And you're very you are yeah. very charming like, yeah I can totally that's true. Do, so but it's I, not the same though because i'm like yes yeah, i ask women not. you pray for a guy but i know sometimes y'all have friends who have imaginary boyfriends mm-hmm. <laughs> yes meaning like i said i like him so if you talk to him you're wrong so i met this girl <laughs> i was at this club and i met this girl and we had such a great conversation the energy was right and i was like yo i like you i said uh, can i get your number she's like, i can't do that and i was like what do you mean she was like <sighs> I said, what are you talking about? She was like, my friend loves you. And if I got, Girl. if I got <laughs> your like number, Dior, so my friend would you. be mad at you. And I'm like, do I know her? She's like, you probably don't. And I was like, <laughs> I was wow. like, what? And I saw her she after that so moment hurt. and the energy was still there. And I'm like, ooh. And I'm like, it's still there. Like it never went anywhere. And we never had sex or nothing. It was just, the energy was there. It was just a good vibe. And I'm like, you pray for a man and you meet him. And then you're like, no, because I'm being loyal to my friend. That was weird. 
So and I never met there's her. There's two things going on there though. Like, right? Tell like me. loyalty to the friend, that's a whole nother episode. Um <laughs> like can you date exes of your friends? Like not that, even that, an that ex. Would, I never met her. Would, I know, but I'm saying like that would be lumped into that, like, can you can you date someone that your friend likes even, right? Right. Um, even though she doesn't know the real you, she has an idea based on social mm-hmm. media, based on maybe coming to your comedy shows. So like that's one episode right there within itself. But the reality part, right? Falling in love with someone who has not actually invested in you, right? This woman loved mm-hmm. you who didn't even know you. So Love how me? <laughs> she, she loved you, but she didn't know you. She fantasized you. about you. The one I didn't meet, yeah. right? The one you okay, hadn't yeah. met, right? She loved you, but she had never met you. Oftentimes, we can meet someone too and love who we want to believe them to be, yes. and that's not who they have shown us, right? Yes. So this goes into your question earlier on how do we bring people back into reality. And a lot of times it looks like doing the self work, right? There's assessments that we do so that they can get clarity around. Um, and I do an assessment, a spicy assessment, where mm-hmm. I'm getting clarity around what's your level of self-awareness? Mm-hmm. What's your level of passion? What's your level of intimacy? What's your level of communication and learning to say yes, right? So I give an assessment early on, 140 questions that's asking you about yourself. So I'm looking for what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities for growth in your life? And what are the threats if we don't grow in these areas? And bringing them to reality of, oh, so you fantasize about people based on what you feel, not based on fact, right? Right, right. Majority of us make decision, a lot of us, which is why sales are so powerful in America when it comes to marketing and advertising is because what does this commercial make me feel? Feel, What does this person make me feel? What does this comedian make me feel? Half Mm -hmm. the times we like the comedians that we do even is because you guys make us feel, you tap into my love of relationship. You freaking tap into me and Bree's laughter of what we see every day with our clients. We are attached and attracted to your aura and your essence Mm -hmm. based on the delivery and the way that you Mm -hmm. get right. So it is, there's a, there's a sales that comes with that. Yeah. So understanding, like, are you actually in love with what they are giving and who they are showing up to be? Or is it the story that you're telling yourself? So unpacking also too from the beginning, and you know, Brie can even speak with this about like childhood. Where does that come from? Like, yeah. you know, what does this mean? Where does what come from? Childhood. So like, oftentimes um, we will overcompensate even when someone like doesn't maybe even show up for us because we had oh, a parent yes, in the yes. household yes, who yes, didn't. Yes, yes. Yeah. So like, we will. You become the thing that you missed in your childhood. Yeah. To everybody. Yeah, yeah. and we will sell ourselves even. A dream when it comes to so maybe it's coming from a, a need for acceptance right you didn't get enough attention growing up from maybe a certain parent or when you performed a certain way you got attention mm-hmm. now you're showing up in relationship that way right mm-hmm. so this is a self-awareness piece and so understanding like this is why you're doing what you're doing and then going to what are you actually seeking from that behavior right so mm-hmm. actually saying okay is there another way to get what we're seeking that doesn't mm-hmm. look like us investing before the reciprocity is there. So I always instruct my clients, he takes a step, you take a step. He takes a step, Mm -hmm. you take a step. Of course, yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like he takes a step and you take 10 steps. And that's usually what we do. And oh my God, it's what people do. (laughs) Oh man. (laughs) You start out of being white, man, hello? (laughs) What people do, and it it, it disincentivizes men from showing up the way that they can show up. You know, you said earlier about like... uh, he wants to take care of you and your femininity should already be there. But I think you were asking like about how does a woman change that? Yeah. It shouldn't change. Your femininity actually will soften. It will elicit yep. the taking care yeah, of like out of practice. the man. Yep. So you already have to be that woman. For sure. And it will literally elicit a different caliber of men, a different type of men, For sure. different types of dates, different types of behaviors, different types of conversations, different types of commitment. The, we're giving y'all... Right. Some money over here. Okay? And and so your softness is the algorithm. <laughs> it's literally the algorithm. As a comedian, I work on myself a lot to make sure whenever I show up, I change the environment. That's my mm-hmm. gift. If you meet my parents, they'll curse each other out. Like your little Puerto Rican Mexican friend, she wants something <laughs> to eat, huh? They want something to eat. I, and they will curse each other out and keep going back to cooking. That's how my family is. So we, we never meet strangers. But I feel like once you cultivate what your gift is, that's the thing that's going to bring you what you need. So mm-hmm. even as an actor, yep. when I walk into the room, they're going to feel something. They're like, I like his, I don't know what's going on. I like yeah, what he's bringing. Because yeah. it's two auditions. It's the, what you bring into the room and then it's the actual audition. Uh-huh. I have that gift on stage in relationships. My wife has it too. She's so good. Whatever she touches, she it's turns it to gold, including my heart. But like, that's your gift and the thing you work on, that's what will bring you the things that you say you want. The guy yes. that you want, he's on the other side of you working on that thing and that's the algorithm. When you when People like being around people that's a good time. If you go on Always. a date, don't put too much For on sure. it. Have a good time. You have a good time with your homegirls when y'all brunching. Be that person on a date with him. Well, he like, 
I just like you in my space. Well, before you look at, is this going to be my husband? Is he going to be an incredible lover? Let me just see if you can be Putting a great too much friend. On it. Mm-hmm. If, are you a good friend? Can I hang out with you? Can I enjoy your time? Before I even decide if you could be a good husband. But there is a level of self-honesty that you have to have in order to keep your expectations realistic. Yeah. Because when you are living in delusion, you will try to fit anybody who comes in your purview <laughs> into part. your future husband. And I'm sorry, the odds are that there's probably going to be one. Maybe you're going to be two. Maybe if you are a Libra woman, you know, you're going to have five. But <laughs> my point is, is Libra's of all pulling. the My mom people, was a Libra. She'd be staying yeah. with the house. Ladies, you know who your husband is. You just don't like his height. <laughs> you know, like, maybe in this lifetime Ooh, you got one, maybe two. That's a whole nother. We need it. That's she, a, yeah. need to be you, honest Ronnie's with you. Yeah. And then don't. episode topics on this Right. Uh, and then episode. don't try to impress your friends. Like, you can have a cool situation. You don't have to tell your homegirls about everything. Tell the homegirls who've been in love Agreed. or have a reference point. Because sometimes it's hard to have to a woman celebrate you when she wants your life. Wait, you had a question that you said um, about, do you feel like men or women hold each other more accountable? Mm. And I was so curious. What are your thoughts? So I think when it comes to uh, being honest with self, I think that women are less honest with self. Right. I think mm-hmm. that um, we are training ourselves now through therapy and doing the work. Uh, to be more self-aware. But when it comes to self-regulation, right, which is an important part of um, emotional intelligence, I think men have mastered the regulation part, right? I'm going to override the feeling that I'm feeling in order to achieve the goal that I have. Mm -hmm. Where us as women, we haven't reached that yet. I don't think that in relationship we have shown up with hey, let me not react this way because that's not going to get him to spend more time with me. If anything, I should react this way, say these words, and then I will get my quality time, right? Mm -hmm. So I I don't think we're there yet. I think that's why the coaching is so necessary. But when it comes to accountability and saying, you know what? I was wrong and you're right. I don't think either have really mastered that. But I think that when it comes to um, being logical, about the steps that we're taking and does this make sense is this emotional reaction or mm-hmm. does the does me doing this behavior make sense for what i want i think that men are somewhat stronger in that area right i think that as women we will always choose and lean into emotion over logic um but earlier when we were talking about though leaning into masculine energy i think we do that when it serves us in our career but when it serves us in our relationship, right? Like, does this emotional reaction make logical sense? I think there should be a balance of head and heart in relationship. I don't think one should override the other. I think they need to be working together. I kind of feel like, um, one, it's less about the gender of the person and more about the caliber of the person and the people around them, right? So I think that's always going to be the most deciding factor. However, I think that when... Men say that they want to be accountable and they tell that to other men. Mm-hmm. I think other men are more willing to be accountable because when you're being accountable to somebody, it means being honest and it sometimes means means hurting feelings. Yes. And I think men have mastered, like we're talking about, that you can hurt my feelings and there can still be a relationship here and there can be love. I think that women have cultivated mm-hmm. a little bit of a more dishonest relationship in that, in that if you hurt my feelings then you're a bad friend and that's not always true if it serves your highest purpose I think we've also cultivated a little bit of a like what I call the yes queen culture yes where like girl it don't matter what you do yes queen like yes, yes, we'll I'm, yes so I'm gonna gas you so up whatever much with you right now like, Brie. Um, we can't yes everything what made know? me ask that question and sorry guys she's talking about um an outline that I was sending of like questions I might go to um who holds each other more accountable what brought that up was Um, A girlfriend was experiencing something that I knew if I tell her this, she will not um, take action on it. She will not listen to me when it comes to because my husband was like, well, just tell her like she's with someone that ain't shit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, no, I've already walked her through red flags, green flags. Like we have already done the whole thing. And yet she still wants to be with him. It doesn't serve me in this conversation to remind her that he ain't shit. Right. Where he was like, well, my homeboy, I'm going to tell him what is he doing with his life all day, every day. And he ain't going to cry over it. He's not going to unfriend me because of it. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas women, we will be like, well, sorry, bro, you don't serve me anymore because I don't Mm -hmm. like the way that you make me feel when you Mm -hmm. hold me accountable. But that's your wounded feminine energy Mm -hmm. that allows you to go into victim mode when somebody tries you to hold you accountable out of love. Man. Right. Because a person... uh, 
some of the people that you want to have around you, they're going to hold you accountable to the highest version of yourself yep. that you have told them that you want to be. Mm-hmm. Right? It's again, if you told me that I'm in then my villain era and I'm I'm in my villain era and I'm embracing it, I don't want to hear shit. Then you know what? You told me you're in your villain era. <laughs> villain era. I get it, right? Yeah. Because yeah. Now I'm trying to control right. you. You're right. trying to be a hero, right? I'm trying yeah. to control you. If I'm if I'm constantly trying to make you into a person that you say you don't want to be. Yeah. But if you come to me and you say, friend, this is what I'm trying to do. This is what I'm trying to build. This is what I want. And then you tell me something very out of line with that. I'm going to tell you in love, oh, well, you know, I know you really want to get married. I know you really want yeah. this. Try to move in this way. If that hurts your feelings, you have to deal with your inner child. And you yep. have to deal with your wounded feminine energy and come to and understand that I'm telling you that in love and you have to make it work. But so often we have cultivated a dishonesty in a yes queen. We can't tell in each other nothing because if you're telling me something, then you're hating or you're jealous or you are, you know, not you're not Man. a friend because mm-hmm. you don't make me yeah. feel good. I genuinely feel like women should partner with men to find the man they want. I feel like this women should, be a, should women should partner, partner with, with men, men to, to find the man that they want because usually that? the guy that's in your space can save you time on you not dating a crazy guy. Like men, we recognize the energy of another man. I, I've seen my homegirls with their homegirls; they'll allow their homegirl to be crazy, do crazy with a guy who clearly don't like her. But if a guy show up, be like, "Yo, why are you dating him?" and she'd be like, "Well, I like him," and you're like, "He not it." But I think that's a certain there's a and that certain, could be father that could be friend that's an interesting there has concept. to be some male presence I agree with that though I don't agree <laughs> I don't this is what I agree I he'll agree save you time that a man can say things and deliver it in a way that a woman can't without the penalization because the of punishment the yep. punishment right a man can go and tell you like girl that outfit look horrible take that off and you're like Ugh, but you go change mm-hmm. if your friend tells you friend you know that's a little uh, uh, it's gonna be a different uh, a different reception to yep. that information sometimes simply because he's a man and because we have been conditioned to to know and believe that men can have a harsh delivery but take the essence of what they're saying sensitive we have to be sensitive and then it's reinforced with this soft girl season too so exactly it's leaving us confused so do i be soft or you know should i be in my masculine like where you know what should i be because if i'm in my masculine i'm being direct um i'm leading with uh, it's straight, narrow, here's the guidance, here's raw, here how it, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. here's how it is. Mm-hmm. So it is, we are living in a time where I think that people are confused of when to pivot between the masculine and feminine energy. I don't think there's a pivot, but like I was mentioning before, I didn't get a chance to finish my whole point. Sorry. But like, <laughs> Oops. if you have dad in your life, if dad meets that man, your dad will size that dude up Absolutely. instantly. That's why I said you need to partner with a man, even if it ain't your cousin, brother, or just male friend, I feel like women should partner with men to help save them time. Because I have a bunch of homegirls, and they'll ask me questions about a guy. And they'll stick around. And I'm like, when we revisit the conversation that I told them in the beginning, mm-hmm. I'll remind them what they said. And they were like, yeah, you did say that. And I'm like, well, you told me this, this, this. You said you weren't attracted to him. Y'all didn't have the spark. Uh, he wasn't adventurous. And I'm like, I reminded you of what you said. Mm-hmm. And then, like, but I could have saved her time if she listened. But again, if you don't have males in your life and you're just only... Yes, queen in it. It's yeah. kind of, it'll <laughs> yes, it'll take it. you down a long path because your homegirls again. Sometimes they want to be happy for you, and sometimes they want your life. But so they ain't gonna tell you what you need to hear. Listen to the cousin who don't have a healthy it's relationship. It's a certain guy oh, that has access to you. I think Not you're all over guys. giving credit to how much of a wise person that you are and how you are. A, yeah, I think how you, you think are that most people have men even in their lives know, like though. you. No, I think that you no. think that most people have men in their lives like you, and I think that that's far from the truth. That's yeah. So you don't have no guy friends? Oh, I got tons no, of guy friends. I yeah. know oh. you do. And I know you <laughs> do too. Right. Got lots. I think, I think That's why I said is, partnership. Is saying, you have to find healthy non-romantic, people. Non-romantic. Yeah. yeah. But we're yeah. all assuming we're talking about healthy, just like you said should. He should be honest. He should. We're assuming, we're saying should. I'm saying you should have some type of male presence in your life to help you find a partner. I mean, that would be ideal, right? Like if we were all raised by our fathers who could protect us in that we way. Gotta, men got to seek it out. When a, a man. Because men, women shouldn't even date a guy who doesn't have any man that he's accountable to. Agreed. I think that it's very important. If there's a man in your that life you that he you don't want to disappoint, that guy tends to do better. If there's a man somewhere in his life, coach mm-hmm. somebody mm-hmm. Sure. where he don't want to disappoint. For That's sure. why I said if a man has a plan, he can have a plan for you. But if you don't have a no plan, you can't run the red light because you got the answers. I just I don't know if it's realistic to mm-hmm. put no that guy on. Uh, I know a lot of women who yes. do not have Correct. <laughs> really? friends who they yes. trust. None? They're a None. 
None. Okay. Not a cousin, not an uncle, not a neighbor, not a, a pastor. But that's not part a, of the problem of what's none. happened to our culture is that a lot of people don't have healthy relationships with men. Therefore, they don't know okay. how to create that or recognize it when it comes along with a man who they're dating. Yes. Okay. But that's a whole nother episode. That's so, a whole nother episode. Uh, right. So we got we to gotta wrap it up. But... I really appreciate you guys being on. Please let everybody know where to find you guys. Bree, where can they find you? You can find me at The Gathered Life, all one word, The Gathered Life, on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, on my website. Ron G, we're and please follow me comedian Ron G on all things comedian R-O-N-G I also have a really dope podcast called the two piece podcast it's for personal growth for men uh, men we chase the dream but we don't always chase the things that help us sustain the dream once we get it and the podcast is the number two P-I-E-C-E podcast uh, on all streaming services and follow me comedian Ron G on everything and you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mari. Go to thespicylife.com. Uh, share this episode with a friend. Click and subscribe. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.